For this lesson, we're going to start to take a look at how to deal with non right angle triangles. And the first method that we have for doing that is the sine law. The sine law is a relationship between the sides and angles in any triangle, where if I had a triangle ABC, then side lengths A, B, and C represent the measures opposite the angles. So this would be side length A, this would be side length B, and this would be side length C. In triangle ABC, we're going to draw an altitude where we're going to create a new point, creating an altitude where we're going to go straight down from here. This is going to be a right angle triangle. And we're going to call that point, point D. Now, given point D, the height of this we're just going to refer to as h. So if I'm using the sine ratio from the triangle on the left, then I'm going to say sine b would be the same as h over side length c. That means that h, when I isolate it, is going to be side length c multiplied by sine of angle B. For the triangle on the other side, I can say that sine of C is going to be H over side length B, which means that H in this case would be B multiplied by sine of C or angle C. Now, since these two equations are both equal to h, then that means that I know that c times sine of b has to be equal to b times sine of c. If I divide both sides by the side lengths, or cb, then I wind up with sine b divided by side length b is going to equal sine c divided by side length c. If I divide both of them by sine b and sine c, then I'm going to wind up with the equation side length c over sine c is equal to side length b over sine b. Because I proved it for two of the sides, that would work for any of the sides, which means that a side length divided by sine of the angle opposite will always equal a side length divided by sine of the angle opposite, so on and so forth, or sine of the angle is going to divide by the side length opposite will equal sine of the angle divided by side length opposite over and over and over again. To use sine law, we're just going to use two of the three ratios at a time. So if I was doing it for C and B, I would just pick these two. If I was doing it for A and B, I'd pick these two. Or I could theoretically do the same thing with A is going to equal C. So if I'm putting this into practice, it says Pudluck's family and his friend owned cabins at Callet River in Nunavut. Pudluck and his friend wished to determine the distance from his friend's cabin to the store at the edge of town. They know that the distance between their two cabins is going to be 1.8 uh, kilometers, and using a transit, they estimate the measure of the angles between their cabins and the communications tower near the store. So the store is going to be over by C here. As shown in the diagram, determine the distance from Pudluck's friend's cabin to the store to the nearest tenth of a kilometer. So we're trying to solve for side length A. Now in this case, I know 
the side length opposite C, but I don't know angle C yet, but that's easy enough to solve. I'm going to say that angle C is going to equal 180 minus 61 minus 88, because all the sides of the triangle have to add up to 180, which means that this angle in here is going to be 31 degrees. Now if I know that's 31, I know an angle and its opposite, I know the angle for A, and I'm trying to solve the side length for A. So because what I'm trying to solve is a side length, I'm going to use the sine law where it has the side lengths on the top. And I'm going to say that A divided by sine of angle A, or 61, is going to equal side length C, 1.8, divided by sine of angle C, which is 31. Or, if I'm isolating A, A is going to equal 1.8 multiplied by sine of 61 to get it out of the bottom, divided by sine of 31. And side length A to the nearest tenth of a kilometer is going to be 3.1 kilometers. For example 2, it says in triangle CAT, angle C is going to be 64, side length C is going to be 25.2, and side length, sorry, and this is a typo here, side length A is going to be 16.5. Determine the measure of angle T to the nearest degree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out my triangle. Remember, it doesn't have to be to scale. I'm going to label it as C, A, and T. I'm going to fill in the information that I know. This is 64 degrees. This is 25.2 meters. And this is... 16.5 meters. What I'm trying to solve is angle T here, but I don't know its opposite side length, which means that I can't directly solve that, but because I know C and its opposite, and I know the side length opposite A, I can solve angle A, and then use angle A and angle C to figure out what angle T is going to be. So, because I'm trying to solve for a angle, I'm going to say that sine A divided by its opposite is equal to sine C divided by its opposite. Or, sine of angle A is going to equal 16.5 times sine of 64 divided by 25.2. And to get an angle, I'm going to have to do angle A is going to equal sine to the negative 1 of all of this. 16.5 times sine of 64 divided by 25.2. Angle A is going to equal, if it says to the nearest degree, 36 degrees, which means that angle T is going to equal 180 minus 64 minus 36. Angle T is going to equal 80 degrees. And there's my answer.